Welcome, everybody, to another episode. We uh, have an awesome space here at VIP Mortgage, so thank you to them. Uh, thank you, Trey, for doing the amazing job on the engineering, and to Trisha, who is our podcast producer, and she does a lot of awesome things here for us at our new company, Bison Ventures. Yay. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, hey! Yeah. Dude, you oh can do God. that this whole time? You should have been he's, doing that forever. He's got a, he's got a, a little Dude, selection that's of amazing. buttons. Um, yeah, that was pretty cool, Trey. Thank you for that. <laughs> so we have a special guest here today, and she is somebody who helped us come up with our awesome brand and name and everything that goes into a brand that we're all going to learn about today because we didn't before we met Emily Sikorsi like horsey. <laughs> With two C's too, by the way. <laughs> welcome, Emily. Thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. And You're welcome. And thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Well, that's only because you told me how to do it <laughs> a few times. So. You're a quick learner. So um, I want to tell everybody about our experience with you because I think it's super important and we learn so much. But before we do that, I think it's also important that people know a little bit about you. So why don't you just do a quick little, little uh, two minute bio on you and uh, just tell everybody who you are and what you do. Okay, thank you. Um, so as Ryan said, I am the CEO and co-founder of Root and River. You didn't say that. But I didn't I'll say, say that. that. With Root and River. <laughs> yes, which is a great name by the way. And that's one of the reasons why we hired her. <laughs> we walked out, I mean, go ahead. But yeah. That's a good story though. Okay, we'll, we'll loop back to that. Yeah. Um, so I am the CEO and co-founder and I don't, I never, you know, I never know where to start with these things, but where are you from? I grew up here in the Valley and in, in Phoenix and I was a journalist. I started my career as a, actually I started my career as a English teacher in Japan. Oh, wow. fun fact. Uh, yeah. Show off. And where, then, where, what city? Hanamaki, okay. which was in northern oh. Japan. If you're familiar, it's four That's hours city. north of Tokyo by Shinkansen, by the bullet train. I could just say bullet train, but it's fun to say Shinkansen. Yeah. 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 And yeah. It makes me feel It makes cool. you sound like you know how to speak Japanese. <laughs> which I don't. I <laughs> and I didn't when I went there. <laughs> and I honestly, truly thought this thought. Oh, I'll pick it up. Yeah. How hard could it be? That shows you hard. the level of 19 yeah. <laughs> na naivety I had. Um, anyway, and so I had this background um, in storytelling, essentially, and was a journalist and loved doing that. And then I went and did a little PR, social media, ghostwriting. And, but really throughout all of that, the red thread for me is storytelling um, and narrative and writing and crafting language and teasing out the truth and conveying emotions. I'm a really emotional, expressive person. And um, as I was reflecting on my career, you know, you get into your, for me, it was kind of early, mid thirties. I lost my mom to cancer. And so it was this moment of like, who am I, what am I doing? So I called up my dad and I said, um, let's talk about me. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> tell me, you know, from your perspective as my father, what am I all about? Like, what makes me special? And he told me, repeated to me something that he'd said a lot when I was growing up, which is, you can express your emotions better than any other person that I've ever met in my whole life. Wow, that's a big and statement. And so, yeah, he, he said you can put emotions into words. And that was a pivotal moment for me. I was actually sitting up in, we had a home in Flagstaff at the time, and I was just, I remember where I was in that moment, sitting on the couch when he said that to me. And I was taking notes like a journalist would because I wanted to capture as much of it. And when he said that, it was like something clicked into place for me. And I realized that, um, that I needed to organize around that a little bit more than I had been doing. And at the same time, I was a corporate marketing executive at, at that point, and I realized, because I started as a journalist, and then I did PR, and I got to learn more about businesses and entrepreneurs, and I saw this huge gap between the passion that entrepreneurs have for their businesses and how they're expressing it. And in that gap, cliches, colloquialisms, boring language, a shit ton of explanation, where it could just be more about emotion and expression. And so I really, I, I felt like it was an injustice that entrepreneurs, people that work so hard, were really not able to tap into their emotional centers and then translate that into language. And I, I kind of wanted to fix that. I felt like 
that should be available not just to people that can hire super fancy agencies out in the world, but to everyone who's willing to pour their their invest their energy, their time, their their entire like lifetime, everything they have into a business, but then not express it properly in the world. And so um, around about that time, I was, I was playing with all those ideas. I met my business partner, Justin Foster. He's based in Austin, Texas. And he kind of had a similar idea about brand, and we came together and started Root and & River, and that's what we've been doing ever since. Now, you guys didn't like love each other at the beginning, right? <laughs> Before you became partners. Uh, no, <laughs> we didn't. We often call it like an yeah. iron sharpens iron relationship. Um, no, it, it kind of got off to... Uh, <laughs> a fiery combative start. <laughs> um, yeah, so we met cause I was the head of or VP of corporate communication for a human behavioral research company also based here. And, um, he was a, had been a speaker at our flagship kind of event, our conference every year. And I had seen him speak and I thought he's a really good speaker, but I don't think we're going to be friends for a variety of reasons <laughs> anyway. But then he was, I was now leading the conference. Um, I was there initially as a consultant I was leading the conference a few years later. I knew he was going to be there and I thought, Oh, well this time maybe you should actually have a conversation with him instead of judging so, him. You know, judgy. Judgy and dismissive, which I can be sometimes. So, um, <laughs> anyway, I introduced myself and we, we had just sort of a, a meeting of the minds and then, the next day we were chatting before, um, you know, the day, the day's breakout sessions were going on and we were talking about brand and he had all these interesting ideas about, you know, it's human to human and, and brand really needs to tell the truth and, and be bold, which I was like, yeah, absolutely. And that's what's missing. And then I said, well, I got to wrap this up because I got to go present and do a breakout session. And he's like, he's pitching me, right? So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I got to go. And, uh, I said, are you going to come to my session? P.S. Do you want my business? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he looked at me and he goes, no. <laughs> I said, I looked at him and I said, well, you're rude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then he kind of backed out a little bit. Um, you know, come to find out later, he wasn't feeling well, but in that moment, I'm like, suck it up, buttercup, you know, right. you gotta right. get, get in there. Or he could uh, have mentioned that he didn't feel well. He's like, oh. Also an option, yes. <laughs> um, anyway, he ended up coming to the session and, and uh, gave me some good feedback later, but we, <laughs> I give him another All chance. All the things you could have done better. Yeah. <laughs> and that's sort of the nature of our relationship yeah. is like a little bit of that was awesome, but here's how we can improve yeah. it. And that's really how we started. And we actually built, build our differing point of views. We're both really different people into the experience of brand work because it's something that we avoid conflict to dissension. Um, we do it in kind of immature ways a lot of times as human beings, but healthy dissent is actually so productive in creative settings. When you're trying to figure out what your brand is, it's very healthy. If we have the courage and we have the trust between um, people or groups of people to go there, which is one of our, you know, our rules for working with people is there's no silent dissent. Silent dissent is the killer of conversations, of ideas, of brands, but we can surface dissent and have it in a way it can lead to just a better result. So it's sort of the nature of our relationship. Right. And I think we leverage it in a really interesting way for our clients. I think you guys work really well together. Yeah. But for sure, the two different people. He's the king of fun facts. Definitely. He knows a little about about everything. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You could say a camera and he'd be like, hey, did you know that <laughs> the camera is? And you're like, Jesus, he does. He knows does he all know of the things. All this stuff? Like, I just don't. I, I'm so, still in awe of that. Right. And when, when we came up with our name, the first part of our name, mm -hmm. like, we knew that we were on the right track because of all the facts they threw out <laughs> about our the name about behind Bison. We're like, oh, yeah. We just liked it. It was I like, holy he, cow. He jumped out of his chair with excitement. Uh, yeah. Because, We're yeah. like, why do you know all this stuff? And he's he did just like, grow up on, on yeah. a ranch. He's like, I grew up on a ranch. Which and we all I know. know. <laughs> right. So he's like, I know a lot about the bison. Mm -hmm. But so let's fast forward to then us meeting because mm -hmm. you were at, you were speaking at um, the, the brokery, brokery event, right? Yes. And Root and River came up. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dang, because Stuart and I were already sitting there trying to think of like what we could, we were already brainstorming, right? And I was like, man, that's a great name, right? And then then I decided, well, now it's gotta be two words for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's gotta be something and something, mm -hmm. not just something, not like two words, but two word, a word and something, mm -hmm. right? 
that's not what it is, but that's <laughs> what I really wanted it to be. Well, kind of it is. <laughs> yeah. Bison Ventures. Right, but it, not Bison and Ventures. Correct. Right. So um, after you spoke, it's funny, like I looked at Stu and I was like, we really need to talk to her, right? And at that point, he knew that he knew you, obviously, because mm-hmm. you guys, your husband and him are friends and you had mm-hmm. obviously hung out with him before, but um, so that led us to the fact of Jeremy coming on board, right? Well, Jeremy came from Chase and he's like, what? Why would we hire, let's just pick something and we gotta get the paperwork started, mm-hmm. right? So, but mm-hmm. we couldn't come up with the name, come up with the name. And we're like, we really need to hire, we need to do things right. If we're gonna do this, let's do it right. Let's just not go to 99 Designs <laughs> and pick Jeez. out a logo and figure out a name and yada, yada, yada. So, when we finally, so when we finally met at Industrious over in Old Town, not the one in the mall, by the way, um, we, that wasn't Industrious, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Mm-hmm. We sat in there. She's an artist too, by the way. This is so true. like, which you had to redraw everything because we couldn't get <laughs> That's her right. iPad to work on the mm-hmm. freaking screen there. So she had to literally draw everything, which was actually cool to watch it all go, you know, come into fruition. But it took about an hour, I would say, of us sitting there going, thank God we hired somebody to do this because we were like so just like, boy, we're in over our, our skis on this. <laughs> and at that point, we did decide that it was gonna be Bison v- Ventures-ish. Mm-hmm. We knew it was gonna be Bison something, but it was gonna be Bison Capital, Bison Financial, mm-hmm. Bison Mortgage. And Justin just would not allow us it to be anything but ventures because mm-hmm. he's got this whole thing. I'm sure you both do, but I just remember him. Mm-hmm. Everything's got to be a little vague. Yep. You have to have a, like, you have to have a reason to have a conversation, yes. right? And we're like, well, in this business, everybody needs to know that they're going to get a mortgage, not going to get capital for their business, right? Mm-hmm. So that was a tough thing to kind of get through. And we even left that day really still not sure of what the name of the company was going to be besides but we all liked Bison for sure. And we liked Capital, we liked Venture. We loved Ventures the most, actually. Mm-hmm. But it just didn't, we're like, what is Trey gonna do when he goes to like Google and see Bison Ventures? He's gonna go, okay, I'm gonna go to Bison Mortgage. That looks better, right? right. <laughs> I'm gonna this, hire those guys. This was a conversation that you, Stu and I had um, when we met for breakfast. And you were like, well, we're thinking it's pretty unclear. And I was like, yeah. wait a second. Yeah. And then you yeah. got irritated yeah. with me. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm like, it's gotta be ventures. It can't be mortgage, can't be lending, can be loans. And uh, good job. Drew. Well, guess what? It still could have been all those. <laughs> it could have <laughs> worked just I fine. I know you went around and around on that one. But, but it sounds yeah. so good. It, the, the way it sounds and looks is by far the best. Yeah. But I have had plenty of people ask me, because not that we've told everybody, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but, I have had people ask me like, why'd you name it that? Like, what do you guys do? Mm -hmm. What is it? And I was like, well, this is exactly why. So we can start a conversation about what it is we're doing. Um, But we did add informed mortgage lending underneath it. So it's your tagline. So everybody can stop asking those questions. Yeah, a couple thoughts there. Cause we've been talking about brand and people might be like, oh yeah, like your logo. Cause that's what people think about with brand, right? right? And um, the name. Right. So brand is so much deeper than that. Um, which we didn't know. Yeah, which right. people don't know. That's just, they you know, don't. people just assume, oh yeah, your colors, your logo. And we're like, yeah, and a lot more. So we practice what we call intrinsic branding. And to your point, the goal of intrinsic branding is to know who you are, know how you're gonna express that in the world and evoke curiosity. People think that they confuse marketing with branding and they think that um, your brand has to answer all the questions. It has to explain everything. And it doesn't really needs to express that emotion Mm -hmm. and then kind of lead into more conversation. Like if you have, if somebody asks you what you do and you say, I'm in mortgage, that's the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. If you say, well, we're Bison Ventures and we believe that Expertise. Expertise without, without empathy, empathy is, is failure. failure. That's I love that so much. Something. Look out for the shirts, people. <laughs> and all kinds of other That's stuff. our favorite. That, that yeah. To me, that was my favorite thing that, that, like, I think about that all the time, and I see that all the time, and I'm like, this is such a cool thing. Um, 
Powerful. Powerful. Expertise without empathy is failure because it, it, it is a big deal when it comes in this business, yeah. right? It's like bedside manner, right? Mm -hmm. You can be a brilliant lone surgeon, so to speak, but if you're not cool <laughs> when you're talking to somebody on the phone and not making them mm -hmm. feel good about the fact of what they're, they're going through, because we do know that it can be difficult, you're losing the deal and go, they're going somewhere else probably. Yeah, absolutely. So, so dive a little bit deeper into like how the process worked for us. Yeah. So we got together in what we call a root session, and that's sort of the, the juicy center of our work together with our clients. And it's a day-long immersive experience um, into the soul of the brand. And we kind of reshape how you think, what you think a brand is, while going through these series of um, kind of immersive, artful exercises that require you to dig into what we call the soil of soul. It's a little bit like therapy. There might be tears shed, there often are. Um, and we uncover, so we don't prescribe. We are brand archaeologists, but we're, we're not, you know, we don't tell you what your brand is. We help you uncover what's already there. So we dig into your beliefs, to the mission, um, and not a mission statement because that's boring and nobody cares, but the mission, what you're here to do, the thing you're here to do that nobody else can do. Bison is going to come at this in a way that nobody else can because of the people and their experiences and their failures and successes. So we want to dive into these deep ideas, ask really tough questions. And then once we've surfaced what's there, we go into honing of that language to make it as simple and evocative and emotional as possible. And we roll through a series of exercises as we did that day and we are uncovering the brand. Sort of imagine a little dinosaur um, or big dinosaur um, skeleton in the dirt that we're just kind of yeah. chiseling away at. And so we, we'll, we'll do um, the mission, the beliefs and the standards of the organization, which I know you guys, you guys came up with some amazing Jeremy standards. Jeremy loves beliefs and standards. Oh, yeah. They're loves really, talking about those. I think the favorite part across the board for all of our clients, and they're so usable. So they're five short mantra statements that really embody how you're living out your beliefs in your organization. And they don't just apply to everyone else, they apply to us and how we expect other people to behave. And then we move into messaging. We, well, we look at our ideal audience and we put that into language and we do it in a way that's not, you know, kind of that avatar, like let's create a demographic profile and name them, you know, mm -hmm. Shopper Susie, because that's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> um, but we go deep, it's a psychographic profile and we name the kind of the archetype we're looking for. And then we get into message and message is really kind of the tip of the spear, right? So if the message is not, simple, unexpected, and emotional, then it, it falls flat. And in your industry, in your space, there's a lot of people that have safe, expected messages, and who, again, nobody cares. No one's sitting around waiting to hear a safe message. When you can have something that's truly evocative, then again, you, you start conversations and you can build a brand over time. Um, and then we, we kind of make it all real at the end and we do, we get into planning and Throughout the whole process, again, we're, we're, we're going places that maybe you would, you would not expect from a, a branding team, and, uh, but it has to be rooted in the things that you care the most deeply about, mm -hmm. because then it can be, it's genuine, and your audience, people, we're great bullshit detectors, and if we are spewing marketing phrases, cliches, colloquialisms, then that language gets treated like marketing, which means People put up the dividers, they put up the armor, and they don't want to hear it. So let me ask you a quick question then. This is going to put you on the spot. Okay, what good. do you remember feeling like, like from an emotional standpoint when we were in our session? Like what resonated with you the most? Oh, I love that question because I am an empath, so I get a lot on an emotional level during those sessions. I think I definitely felt your surprise that like, oh, this is, wow. Like we didn't know that we needed this so much. Mm -hmm. So I definitely felt that. And then things got really real. Um, you know, the three of you have come together for deeply personal reasons and you were able to share that and connect what you're doing with those personal stories, those successes, those failures, those pains, those losses and create I get a little emotional just thinking about it. create something out of those ashes. Um, it 
it happens frequently in the sessions, but not all the time. And I had never seen three founders that come together at, at a certain moment in the way that the three of you had to create create something in a very aligned and resonant emotional, from an aligned, resonant, emotional chord. Um, and to just hold each other, like to just be in that moment and be like in it together and supporting one another and being really real together. So that's what I remember from your session that really impressed me. For people who are confused by the three guys, somebody's you know new to our team, Jeremy West. Jeremy West and Stuart Crawford mm -hmm. and the Ryan Madrid from Real Talk with Ryan Madrid. Yes. Well, sorry, it's just, it's just Ryan Madrid, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we may we may change the name of the podcast one day who knows who knows yeah Perhaps. but no I, I think that like one of our biggest things was legacy like coming into something like that was was we're all unsure and like you said it, it, it's just we we definitely hit a moment you know pretty quickly in this like okay this is super important this is gonna this is gonna differentiate our brand from anybody else that we know because we're going to take the time to really dive into to the things that that we need to do and obviously with you and justin doing that with us we felt very comfortable mm -hmm. like you know, like we were friends already so we made it easier for us to be vulnerable in in that mm -hmm. that situation but uh yeah no it was just an amazing day mm -hmm. and we have we have all the drawings obviously you sent to us and i'm looking at them right now wh why don't you um awesome. why don't you read off the uh, the uh, beliefs and standards that we came I up with. I would love to. Okay. Beliefs. Positivity, respect, loyalty, integrity, ownership, and excellence. And Emily, I don't know if these were supposed to, if I'm listing them separately or if they were supposed to correlate with what's across, but positivity, attitude is a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Respect, see yourself and others. Loyalty, protect the herd. That's, I think, something you guys should talk about. Integrity, you know what's right ownership we are pro we are all problem solvers and excellence is autograph your work which is like i love that mm -hmm. yeah so i'll touch on a few of those i think that are that i like the most is yeah. um like she said protect the herd that's a huge one for us because you know obviously the business is difficult as it is um we want to make sure that we do things the right way and and it's everybody is at risk <laughs> Of, of something bad going down if we don't if we don't do this you know not only our image and our brand but also just our business right so um and then autograph your work basically is you know it's like take ownership in everything you do like mm -hmm. take pride in it knowing that like you it's yours and your name's on it and you are a part of the a brand the initial ogs like we like we said it's the truth right so like we have our initial our original 15 16 of us that um are going to be involved from the beginning and and gonna like Stuart said he was one of the first guys at vip mortgage and like he loves that like that was always his like he thinks that's so cool and loves talking about that well everybody who's part of bison ventures gets to feel that same way mm -hmm. so take ownership and autograph your work and everything you do. So um, those are the couple of the cool ones that I thought, but getting back to the beginning though, that, that expertise without empathy is failure is that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the, that's the How did yeah. you come awesome. up with that? I'm just curious since I wasn't. Justin did, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Emily no. did, I'm just kidding, no. I don't remember exactly, Some a lot of times I do remember like, oh I came up with that. Yeah. But we we don't really like we are just vibing off yeah. of like what we throw out in the moment. So somebody might say something and you're like, oh no, it's not. But like then, two words like, separately. Yeah, but then it's like, but wait, what if we played with that concept yeah. and we added this? And so I think it came out of something, you know, some train oh. like that. But I think you said something really interesting earlier, and this is where intrinsic branding is different: is that you made a choice to differentiate around who you are, the three of you what you believe in. And that is a bold choice. It's daring, it's courageous. And a lot of brands that they want to talk about, you know, features, speeds and feeds and like how fast we can close. Right. And it's just not different. Every industry is over commoditized. Everyone's tired of being marketed to. So the only way to differentiate is to really organize around what you truly and deeply believe. That's my belief, mm -hmm. um, which is why, you know, at Root and River, our message is that every great brand is a spiritual experience. 
So that requires you to get in touch with your spirit, with your essence, with your soul, like why the hell you're here and why it matters and really actually connect that to what you're doing every single day. And all of those choices to do that are courageous choices. And a lot of people, most people, most organizations choose not to because it's too vulnerable, right? Yeah. And, and you always have, you run the risk of getting called out when you're, right. when you're, you're not meeting that standard that day. And that's okay. That's yeah. all right, but it is a bold choice. I just want to honor that you guys st stuck with it and like went there, but also validate that for everyone who's listening, that's really what branding is about. It's about an act of courage that you decide to organize around who you are and what you want to put out into the world. Two things. So on your website, I don't know the exact verbiage, but I'm gonna try it. It's something along the lines of we're not for everybody. Warning label. Correct. Warning right. label, we're not for everybody. That was a huge thing for us because we were like, if they can do that, <laughs> we can do that because we feel the same way. It's like, you know, we're we're a commoditized industry, mm -hmm. and like you said, it's about rate and it's about speed and stuff. And and we're, you know, we like to say that we're we're a little bit more consultants, and when you need like an experience to go through this experience like we're the right people for that because number one, education is a massive part of what we talked about that day, but where everybody on our team believes that we have to over-educate the client because they need to feel like that they know everything that's going on and, and sometimes it's too much, right? Mm -hmm. But also the next person they may talk to, they're not gonna do the same thing. So that person is gonna come back knowing something, they're gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna use their team, Bison Ventures, because we feel like, you know, I understand what's going on, but it's like going to the doctor, right? Bad bedside manner, mm -hmm. doesn't matter if you went to Harvard Medical School. Nope. If you are an asshole, mm -hmm. I don't ever wanna go see you again. I'd rather go to the guy that went to, to became a surgeon in Bahamas, right? right? Right, At the end of the day, honestly, like so, so education is huge, but we have to be empathetic of the fact of what they're going through and what the perspective is from that person when they have to, you know, you know, they may not hear the news that they want to, that they want to hear. We might have to coach them on how to like mm. get their, their personal financial situation better. We might have to teach them things. And guess what? We might have to ask for the same thing three times. Right. <laughs> so yeah, and people so, aren't super stoked about like handing over dough. <laughs> tax returns and right. bank statements. Of, that's a very vulnerable. Multiple times too. Yes. That's a very vulnerable thing to yeah. ask of the client. So I think us leading with vulnerability yeah. is it's a well, great leading, way to set the table. Absolutely, leading with empathy. I mean, that's huge. I, I remember at one point I was sharing this with uh, somebody else in our, in our organization who was newer to our team. And they were like, empathy? Like, wait, is this a mortgage? And I was like, yep, yeah, right. that's how rad of this is. <laughs> and that's where we're going. And yes, we're gonna put that on the banner, the header banner of the website. And we're yeah. gonna talk about that. And this is what the most successful brands do. They create an, a holistic experience from beginning to end mm -hmm. um, that they are working every day to make real. And yeah. um, it, it can be, fully aspirational, but it has to, and it has to be, we think, rooted in, in the soul, something very deep and true for you. And those that get it, they meet people, they meet human beings where they're at, and we're inviting people to come into that experience. Yeah. And, and I mean, Disney does this, Southwest Airlines does this, and Bison Ventures does this. Bison Ventures does. So one of the things that I have, so the bison, right? Mm -hmm. The American animal. Mm-hmm the big thing is it runs into the storms, right? It's the only animal that runs into the storm where everybody seems, seems to run away, right? So I had conversations about this with friends and they're like, I was like, yeah, you know, the only animal that runs into storms. And they're like, so you're telling me like my mortgage is gonna be a storm? Like, is this gonna be, I have to do this? And I'm like, obviously you've never bought a house. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm like, you know, so so my, my not a spin, but my my thought was like, well, what we're saying is we're not afraid of conflict. We're not afraid of difficult situations. And this is an industry that can be difficult. We can only control what we can control. Mm -hmm. And we are in, we're teammates with you, right? We're in this together, but we both need to understand that 
it's a it's what we're this, we got some background noise happening over here is that when when there's something going on that that like we don't work for you if you're a client you come to us we don't work for you right we work mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. It, and so we're going to need things from you just like you're going to need things from us right. so we need to work together in a cohesive unit to say hey I asked you that for this three days ago, and now you're complaining because things are slow. Well, we're, we need to, at one point even, I think you might have even brought this up. I can't remember who brought it up, but it was like, it's almost like signing a document of some sort and saying like, all right, we're gonna partner on this together. Mm-hmm. Sign this and say, you're gonna do exactly what, what we ask of you. Mm-hmm. Just like we're, you, you should expect us to do exactly what you expect of us. Yeah. If one of us goes south on that, then we can talk about that. But but mm-hmm. we're into this this thing together, right? And just like a herd, yeah. right? It's a relationship, <clears throat> and I think you understand that there's an exchange, and so honoring that and being very clear about it is is so important. That's why we have the warning label, and we say we are not for everyone, and and we think to broaden your appeal, narrow your focus. And so being clear on who you are and then also who you're looking to work with. So if somebody wants super transactional um, and they're, they, you know, they, they just want the lowest rate, make it fast. I don't care who you are. Yeah. You're not the great best fit for them. Right. And we'll um, still do it though. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. It's that's, that's not, that's not the ideal client. Um, right. But right. Yeah. Yeah, but I think there's plenty of people in the industry um, that just want to be transactional. And yeah. from knowing you guys, getting to know you guys, that's not what you're about. You know, you're about all those values that Trisha read off. Uh, loyalty jumped out at me as you were reading that list. And that's just something that my brand experience of Bison has has, has been really at the fore. You're very loyal to one another. It is about legacy. It's about bringing everyone along with you into right. the herd. And that's where those metaphors are really resonant. Um, it's not like we came up with a cute idea and then we overplayed it. It's that it's actually lived out in the brand experience. Yeah. No, it's it's been an amazing experience. It's like when I try to tell people about the the situation mm-hmm. with our, our brute session, it's amazing. Like I'm in a, I'm in a Junto. It's called Junto. People call it Junto, but it's called Junto. It's a networking group that was actually the first one ever was formed by Benjamin Franklin. Oh wow! Yes, you're a big Ben it's, Franklin fan, aren't right? you? That's why I know a lot because <laughs> I'm in this group called Junto, which he formed. But n- there wasn't one person in that group of sixteen guys that had gone through a root session, so to speak, on like on true branding mm-hmm. and yet yet and and there becomes a time where, where people need to rebrand yes right and and really dive deep but i told them all about the session and what we did and i showed them all of what we did mm-hmm. and they're like wait you did that in one day <laughs> it's kind of crazy. and i was like yeah they're like dude we that took us seven years <laughs> to figure out how to like all this stuff. And I was like, this is what I'm saying. This is what you pay for. Yeah, You pay for experts to teach you and to dig down and like pull things out of you that you didn't really like know, right? But leaving that day, we were so like, okay, we're doing the right thing. Like we're starting this company. Like mm-hmm. we're, our, there wasn't any second guessing at all at that point, not that there was, to, to, but we're like, this is a real company. Like we just created, mm-hmm you know, our, our beliefs and standards and our, you know, Mm -hmm. vision. Right. And like, what is like, like, why are we doing this? It was such an impactful day that we all still like, I mean, that's why you came to our, uh, our initial release party, so to speak for our our team. Yeah. 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 It's so fun. I love the fact that you guys were so secretive about it. I mean, like, obviously, I knew a little bit. <laughs> tried to be. <laughs> well, tried to be. But it was so cool because I was looking at all the, the faces of the team members as they were, like, yeah. learning. And I saw, and maybe I'm making a bigger deal out of this, than, but I saw, like, true emotion, and I mm. saw pride, and they didn't even know the backstory, right? But they were like, ooh, that's badass. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, the buy-in 
was almost immediate. And I think because they realized so much went into that. Mm-hmm. There was no like, oh, gee, I don't understand why mm-hmm. I have bison or why right. isn't it mortgage? I, the, just, there was like zero of that. It was yeah. all like, this is cool and we're super stoked we get to be a part of it. Right. Yeah. And we were, we were secure with doing it, mm-hmm. but we were insecure a little bit too about the explanation without you being there. Yeah. Like we really felt like you would like make it, you would validate us doing what we did. <laughs> I'm glad <laughs> you felt that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it was just great to be a fly on the wall and watch you rock it. Um, it's nice that you wanted me there, but you, you crushed it on your own and I just added a little flavor. Um, but I think when, to your point, Trisha, when you set out a very clear, genuine vision and you give people the language to use, they are invited into it and most people are like, hell yes. But we talk about you know that repellent factor, right? So we want people to say hell yes or hell no. Yeah. As quickly as possible mm-hmm. so that we know that. We know who's in and who's out. And that goes for, you know, team and that goes for partners and that goes for, you know, even our clients. And when you have that, that's really like, that is like accelerant for your brand. Yeah. The, the, the repel, you have something you You had loyalty since that's one of the Mm -hmm. beliefs that you, I want to talk a little bit about partners with that. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that this came up yesterday with you or Tuesday, Yeah, yesterday. Um, like we, value our partners so much that it's great that that is a big part of like the core of what we're the new brands all about because I think everybody says that like oh we love our agent partners or you know our our title reps the best but like we're super super invested and uh, so I'm excited for you know Mm -hmm. for everybody to understand what that means beyond just our team and beyond just the consumer but that partner Mm -hmm. loyalty because I mean it it would be great if we received that same kind of loyalty that we think we, you know, mm-hmm. that we put out there. Mm-hmm. But um, if you never put it out there, you won't receive it. Right. right for so, sure. Mm-hmm. I think like we're very, very generous mm-hmm. with that. And uh, yeah, that'd be really cool if we could figure out a way to um, be, be show how loyal that we, we are, that it guilted everybody else to be so loyal. <laughs> <laughs> but Tell I'll tell you who's whatever. loyal. The brokery, <laughs> they, yeah, where we met you. You know, the thing they is are awesome. that there is a way to do that, and that's through storytelling. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Tell all those stories. Tell how you know mm-hmm. who were not just that you had so many you know exchanges and recommendations or referrals, but the stories of the people that came through and the relationships that were made and what that led to, and all those are fascinating. As human beings, we have an endless appetite for stories mm-hmm. because they hit us in the heart. Our brains are full. We're inundated daily by all these messages and requests for us to do something. But when we hear a story, it clicks into that deeper humanity mm-hmm. and we are engaged and we literally, our brains start to sync up with the person telling the story and we begin to feel and, and sense that story along with them. And so retain it. And retain it, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So shout out to Debbie Ponticus, by the way, right? Yes, She's the one who girl. brought you yes. to the yes. bakery and into that fold. She did, because so we, we were in a to thank her together. for. Yep. We yes. love is her. She She's one of our store? partners. Yeah, she is. I actually uh, filled snack bags with her husband, Ari, on Saturday. And her, <laughs> and her twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah and her twins were there, too. For, She's uh, phenomenal. She is one of our favorites, for sure. Yeah, she yeah. understands brand. And she's oh I know she's That's damn good at her job. She's mm-hmm. Very good at her job, and it's nice that MBA mm-hmm. <laughs> marketing yeah. Yeah. doesn't right. hurt her business Not for sure. All. She gets it. Yep. Wait, didn't she go to Northwest? Wait, where did she go to school? Um, somewhere in Texas, I believe. Oh, that's right. Uh, Rice. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Oh, I know where. I'm just kidding. I don't know where. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, Debbie. I sorry, Debbie. Debbie. I could have sworn we don't know. I'm actually going to look it but up. But you're super right smart now. and educated. Yeah. And yeah. We love you. And yeah, there, kind. She is, there she is. There she is. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she's just, a, she's, you know what? She <clears throat> is uh, very bison esque. I mean, she's like super yeah. genuine, yep. Yep. very transparent, loyal. Mm-hmm. She's, yeah. She's and great. actually, that speaking gig, that um, speaking to the brokery that day was the first like COVID, post COVID event that I went and spoke at. So. 
It was it was good. It was a meaningful. You got one. something out of it. Yeah. <laughs> did you get any other business oh. that day? <laughs> she sorry. She did go to Rice. She oh. did uh, see Rice University. Jesse H. Jones you, Graduate School. So she that's where her MBA is from. Where's her undergrad? Um, I don't see it. I don't see it here. Find it. Rice. Good job, Debbie. Feel awesome. like she's it a might smart have been Northwestern. Girl. Mm. But it might have been not that too though. So, um, are all your clients referrals? Um, no, but the vast majority usually are. Um, and yeah, they generally people find us and we eat our own dog food at Root and River. So we practice intrinsic branding. Mm -hmm. So typically, you know, we have these emotional evocative messages on our website. We have the morning label. So hopefully if we're doing our job right, we repel the people who really aren't interested in branding the way we do. Yeah. Um, and that's really held held true for us whenever we get an inquiry. We're, we're pretty upfront about the way that we work and they're usually already bought in by the time we get on the phone. Right. Um, so we, we, love, we love kind of meeting our clients where they're at and they come from every industry. They come from every space, and um, it's it's such a pleasure. Sounds like a cliche, but I get a lot of fulfillment from seeing our clients really use what we uncover together and take mm -hmm. it take it uh, out to the world in a powerful way. And you guys have definitely done that. Well, we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So, Emily, if people are not positioned for whatever reason to mm -hmm. hire you for like a root session, can you talk a little bit about like what they can do, like? You know, Bima is something that yeah. I love. And what is that? Very yeah. reasonable. What's Bima? Yeah. Be marketers. Being Marketers is our community, and it is open to anybody who is really trying to be an authentic, um, ethical, and spiritual person in the branding or marketing space. Um, that 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 means either you're a solopreneur, you're running your own brand, or maybe you work for another organization and you're doing marketing and branding for them. Bema is a place where we can come together. We have weekly get-togethers. We provide a lot of information about how to brand, different questions and challenges regularly for how to just improve your brand on a steady basis. Yeah, so that's an option for people. Um, we also have a personal branding program where we work with a small group of people and we help them develop their personal brand in a cohort style. And then we also have a book. So you can buy the book. It's really really just kind of short essays. So very much pick up, put down. It's mm -hmm. awesome. called Rooting Up, Essays on Modern Branding. Um, and we put out a lot of free content. So we blog regularly, we, we create videos. So there's something for everybody at every price point. Um, and you know, we if it feels right to work together, we always find a way. So, yeah. Trey, or Trish, um, record this right now, this question, because we just went through this with Jeremy and Stuart. As opposed to recording. It, it's like, like yeah. we're already. Um, no, I wanted to be able to show it to him right now, oh, right oh, after this. Okay, let me, cause I'm like, because I'm like, going to uh, be recorded. One of the things that Trisha really wanted to do in her role here right. mm. is blog. Yeah. And Stuart and Jeremy think that is ridiculous. <laughs> do they? I didn't realize mm. they thought that They are like, ridiculous. when's the last time you read a blog? And I was like, uh, well, the Chrisman the Report time. is a blog. Mm. I go, but um, you two aren't even on social media. So <laughs> what is the hell, why would you even like even ask this question? Because you obviously don't know anything about right. what uh, that, that side of marketing, right? Yeah. So explain to me, or to Stuart and Jeremy, why would somebody do a blog? So a blog is a great way to, again, differentiate around thought leadership. So you actually, we helped you uncover a category of informed lending. That's not just a tagline, mm -hmm. that's a whole philosophy of lending. And you are going to initiate that conversation in the market and be leaders of that. So where do you do that? You do that on a blog. You do that on a podcast. You A blog gives everyone outside of the brand an opportunity to peek inside, come behind the scenes, learn more about Ryan or about Trisha or about other members of the team. It's an opportunity to storytell. It's an opportunity to develop your audience. Um, it's, a, it's a way to feature partners. I mean, there's so many things you can do with the blog. What I love the most is that blog posts that are well done once you put them out there, they continue to work for you over time. Uh, I wrote a blog, I think about four or five years ago, and it, it tied into what Zuckerberg was doing at the time. That's probably one of the, the, the biggest traffic spots for our blog, right? So I did nothing. I mean, I wrote it, I put it together, edited it, put it up there, haven't touched it since. And where's it at, on the website? It is on our website, right? Where's, so the, the, okay. Yeah. 
So, so where where would blogs be besides on the website? Is it something you would write that would post post on Facebook, or is it something that you would just be so, like Tumblr? Well, you would X or <laughs> Tumblr. Oh. I mean, MySpace. Where would it be? Because Stuart's going to want to know all this stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So you put little snippets of the mm-hmm. blog on Social, Meta yeah. or Instagram, even or wherever. Mm-hmm. Do a little intro on TikTok. However, yep. those are lines in the ocean, right? And they all come back to the mothership of the blog because we want people on the site with an opportunity to learn more and convert okay. into a, a true opportunity to right. work together. And okay. it does tremendous uh, things for your SEO. Correct. I mean, so beyond all of the mm-hmm. like, you know, information and the feel good and all that, it's straight up helps. Google loves blogs. So okay. like, so here's one go. other question then, keep it going. What, why would you do a blog if you could do a vlog or vice versa, or would you do both? Yeah, do both, mix yeah. it up. What do you like to do the most? What do you have energy for? If you have a blog, you can feature other people's vlogs on there. So I just say, go where the energy is. Right, and I think we'll host a blog that will have vlogging within it, right? Mm-hmm. And another thing that I personally love about blogs is the collaborative approach, right? It's not like I'm gonna be writing on the blog posts. You could write one. Christy could write one. We could do, you know, something. Yeah, it could be a Q&A. A, yeah, mm-hmm. like a, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Fast facts, whatever. But any of the people on the team get an opportunity to show up as an expert, right? Mm-hmm. So that creates credibility across the board. Mm-hmm. And it's not just all about you, Stu, and Jeremy. Correct. Right? I mean, because I know that's not your goal. You're, this is all about right. the herd. So that really gives a, a nice platform that any of us can use. Well, be ready to use this when you talk to Jeremy later. <laughs> That's, I, yeah, I am, I, I'm not wishy-washy on this. No. Yeah, he, he just, they just oh, had no idea. It was like, why would somebody yarn using a crochet? Sort of like, like, why would like, we hire anyone like, to do branding? That so weird. And I, and I basically, I was like, listen, we're not right about everything we've done so far. <laughs> like, you're not even on Instagram or Facebook. Either, Stuart's on it technically now, but... He doesn't ever look at it. Right. Trey is scoffing. So, yeah, I mean, it's just like, you know. They, they've got to have a little faith in us, I think. Uh, I you think know? so, too. Because and, we're uh, right. We're totally right. Right. Well, now the the two Figured of you have just said that, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a blog. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. All right, and cool. And we're going to tell, you know, like the, the story, your story, the partners. Yeah. People aren't going to read things three paragraphs necessarily yeah. on the homepage or on one yeah. of the, the pages of the website, right? Yeah. But we can chunk out elements yes. of that story in a blog. Make it skimmable. So that yeah. people can That's consume people it do. quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, maybe they don't care about you, but they only want to learn about Jeremy because he's a new guy, right? So yeah. they're gonna maybe go to his post. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and then they can search by topic and theme and it's, we yep. yeah, we gotta have one. See, do it. You don't know what you don't know. We don't know a lot. That's right. Just Jay to be Barber. curious enough to ask questions. <laughs> yeah. So, um, any other questions you have to uh, dive in deeper, or do you have one more? Uh, oh, you know, I do know you have a question. You have a, a what do we call it? rapid fire question? For oh, you. I do. Thank you for the She's reminder. So excited. I am excited. No, okay. Emily. Is so, well, yeah, we're both <laughs> right because Emily is a writer. So, this is a question that you'll appreciate. What author or book or both and you can have more than one has made a great impact on you uh, on your life <sighs> this is a very difficult question it's like only you know, because she, it's not that she can't think of it it's just no, she thinks of so too many. many things yeah it's like when they ask paul mccartney what's your favorite song that you've ever heard? <laughs> or what's your favorite child who's your favorite yeah. child yeah. yeah exactly that's easy um i mean so many come to mind and literature is just been a guidepost of my life. I often say like, you know, my religion is language and words and authors create them. So um, I'm just gonna roll through a few. Sure. <laughs> my favorite poet We is, only have 15 minutes. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> Brian's like, and it's a wrap. Um, my favorite poet is E.E. E. Cummings. Um, I like how he's destruct, um, dis, he kind of deconstructs it language and then put it together in interesting ways. So, I am a poet and I took a lot of inspiration from him. Um, Die for D. I could, I could recite, but 
Um, Do I've it. heard. Go ahead. As long as it's not super long. No, <laughs> I'll just real quick. One of my favorite poems. From okay. Him. Um, Die for dreams or a slogan may topple you, which is actually, that's just the first two lines, which I think has a lot of um, resonance for branding. Wow. Yeah. Um, anyway, so he was, he was a great influence. Um, I love Anne Lamott. She's really, um, she writes kind of more essay style books and is very raw and unfiltered about her experience. Um, she's a recovering alcoholic and, um, she writes about faith with it, which is interesting, but always in a really like self-deprecating real way. And I just appreciate that. David Sedaris is another, um, inspiration of mine. And I really love, um, I just, I devour books and I love to read them. So more than one author, as I'm, I'm thinking through this, it's about kind of the concert, the orchestra of, um, of authors who come together, who t teach me so much and like bring me inside an experience. Uh, and I think that's what I love the most about literature. And I think literature helps me see the connections between life and work and soul. And, and that's something that I've tried to, to weave, you know, into everything that I do. Um, so it just, it's a sustaining force in my life and I could go on and on. People need to read more books. I need to read more books. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a big audible person, mm -hmm. and there's something uh, missing, you know? Like, I appreciate picking up a book and yeah. turning pages, but I'm yeah. too lazy these yeah. days. Um, I'm trying to work on It's hard to, to find the that. time, and it's we're so distracted, and um, it's just sometimes easier to throw on a Netflix show than crack mm -hmm. a spine um, of a book. Um, but F. Scott Fitzgerald, I reread... Um, the Great Gatsby every few years. Love. Love. It's probably, in my opinion, like one of the best novels from a succinct and descriptive and emotional. And I would note that Zelda Fitzgerald probably did a lot of the editing, if not some of the writing. A hundred percent. Yeah, no, she's way more involved than just note. Yeah, yeah than most people that. think. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you reading now? So I just finished a couple of novels. So I kind of go back and forth between nonfiction and fiction. And I'm reading a YA novel right now called The Midnight Library. And I'm kind of whipping through that. I'm also reading um, Me Talk Pretty one, one Day by David Sedaris. Or Me Talk Pretty Someday. Yeah, I just ordered that. Yeah. yeah. And I am also picked up Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. So re-picked it up. I read that every few years. And then a few business books as well. I love the fact that you openly just basically said I'd read young adult fiction. Oh yeah. I freaking love YA. Oh yeah. <laughs> like Same. way more than like, it's kind of embarrassing sometimes, but oh. I love the fact that you like said that out loud. Well, I yeah, think I do love it. <laughs> this is going to become book talk with Emily and Trish. <laughs> but I love the fact that YA authors. Great movie. <laughs> <laughs> YA authors, they get, and I think this is why they're so good right now. They get, a shorter attention span and they get to the point. There are so many pieces of like literature that people are like, you have to read this writer. There was one I picked up recently, Richard Ford. They're like, oh, you haven't read Richard Ford. How, you know, dare you? This like fake, these fake people in my mind that tell me this. Um, anyway, and I picked it up and I started reading it and I'm like, oh my God, I get it. This guy, he lives a life and it's so boring. There's nothing in it and get to the point already. So I think a lot of literature really labors around and YA gets to it. It right puts away. you in it and there's a lot of emotion and a lot of characters. I love it. Me too. And they do make great movies. And they can make great movies. Uh, cool. <laughs> Wait, wake up, What Ryan. movie is that? <laughs> what movie? Dune. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen the new one. Oh. I haven't either. And I didn't I, read I've the series. I didn't I even that's know. That's really good. Yeah, I. But they well, were books. Like, the girls were like all about it, so they've yeah. Uh, yeah. they've seen it. But I, I'm about to Timothy watch it. Timothy Chalamet. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's only on. He's HBO. a good actor. He's great. It's only on HBO Max, like for a short period of time. So. Oh, shout out to HBO Max. <laughs> they gonna sponsor the show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're looking for sponsors. <laughs> Zendaya's yeah. in that too, right? Yes, she is. Yeah. Zendaya. It's in the theaters. I keep. I'm gonna go to the theater. Is that her name, Zendaya? Yeah, Zendaya. Yeah, Zendaya. She's right. amazing. Oh, that's the girl. From, wait, that's the girl from um, Euphoria. Yep, yep. And Spider Man. Um, oh yeah, and she's she dating is. Tom Holland. She's yeah, is that's great. a cute couple. Very what? Cute. That little guy's dating her? Yep. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> 
He's so short. <laughs> I she's think tall. about her well, height. Think, yeah, I mean, she's look tall. at Tom Cruise, Nicole Kidman. Yeah, well, and a, the happiest day of her life was her running down the stairs of the courthouse she, 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 going like this because we just got a divorce. <laughs> that just came out the other day, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, Nicole and Kidman's happiest day. The she's day like, she her divorce is yeah. over. <laughs> well, I don't think the Bad height was the, was the problem with that one. No, well, well, it's lun lunatic. Oh, I, do, I have one more question. So a no lot, book questions. No, that's not okay. a book question. But since social media is a lot of what I do, um, the and when I coach other agents, mm -hmm. um, you know, like how to more effectively c uh, create posts, the captions are what people some tend to get hung up on. Yes. What do you recommend for people who just want to improve their writing? Hmm, that's a good question. What do I recommend? I have a follow up question too. What about clickbait? <sighs> <laughs> oh, that's some well-written stuff. Gets me every time. <laughs> <laughs> Effective and annoying. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I'll just talk about myself because I can be one of those people that gets hung up on the caption. I just try to, I try to make it really real. Um, and I tend to write a little longer. I've been trying to write a little tighter, a little shorter. Um, Instagram loves long form captions though. Yeah. And I like to write them, but um, I think it's about going a level deeper. So we have this tendency to sort of stay at uh, the superficial level. And if you can be cute and quippy and funny, like genuinely funny, then great. But otherwise, force yourself to go a little deeper. Like what am I not saying? And what am I actually feeling in this moment that I could put into this post um, just for a, on a resonance level? And another thing that's really helpful is who are the who is the person you're writing for? Right. Who's the one person that you would you know you just get a kick out of it if they liked it or if they responded, um, or think of you know your best friend and add a question in there that you would want to hear their answer to. So a lot of great posts and a lot of my more um, traffic posts are ones that end in a question or begin with a question. So that's always a kind of a good place to start if you're not sure. And just go deeper than the photo. Like I, as a journalist, you know, it's always like from left to right, so and so speaks to so and so. Like no shit. Like that's what the picture shows. <laughs> so talk about what happened before. Talk about what happened after. Um, why you, you know, took the picture? Why the you took place. the picture? Um, and you know, if you just stubbed your toe right before you, mm -hmm. or you had to take this picture like fifteen times, tell me that. That's, yeah, that's more it. interesting. Yeah, it makes you more relatable for sure. Yes. So okay, thank you. Words of wisdom. Mm -hmm. From. Also, last thing on that, don't stress so much. Put it out there. Nobody mm. cares. It's gone in a minute. Like, <laughs> right. That's yeah. We had a session this morning, and one of the the agents was like, "I, I'm not a strong writer. I am not like I don't have confidence in my grammar." I'm like, nobody gives a shit right. on Instagram. Move on. You know, and at least put it on your story, and right. like it's gone in 24 hours anyway. You know, and and I struggle with that. I'm yeah. I'm getting better, but um, yeah, yeah, it does not. Done is better than perfect. Absolutely. Right? Right. That's Speaking my of, mantra. Speaking of done. Yep. <laughs> we are there. So that last 10 minutes we're going to cut out. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, just wanna, kidding. Just kidding. I want to do the book answer again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we could keep it oh, here so all funny. day, but she so does have a job. We do have to wrap it up. So do we. But thank you so much, Emily Sikorsi. You're very welcome, Ryan. Rootin' River. <laughs> from Rootin' River. So, everybody, um, if you need a branding expert, call me. Call Rootin' River. Call Emily. Mm -hmm. Rootin'River.com, uh, right? Rootin'River.com. They're not for everybody, though. Mm -hmm. You'll see. Be warned. Be warned. Um, thank you to Trey. And Trey thanks, Trish. Um, everybody, we are on all social media platforms, Ryan Madrid, or Real Talk with Ryan Madrid. Sorry, still, right. there, still there. We'll do it with like an addendum. Yeah, if we have to. We may change it up. But um, And YouTube, please, you can watch this on YouTube. Like and subscribe, please. We need people to watch these videos, listen to these podcasts on any of the podcast platforms um, because the way to keep this running is for people to watch them and listen to them. So please do so. Real Talk with Ryan Madrid, appreciate it. And uh, check this one out because it's a good one. Talk to you later. Thank you.